Hey, good evening, everybody. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you for tuning in to another week's episode of Recording Sasha Podcast. You know, we're here with you on Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're right here on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and then we're also on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and the list goes on. You see it all down at the bottom, but we're everywhere, whether you're listening or you're watching or doing both. I want to say thank you to everyone who have been doing all of that. <laughs> and subscribing and following and everything you've been doing. Thank you so much. Because remember, what you do for us here on this platform, you do for everyone else that joins in, all our special guests. And we have another special guest tonight. Her name is Corey Fonville Foster. And she is a business coach. She is a CEO of IROC. I love that name. IROC Marketable Business Services, but I love the IROC part. So we're going to get into what that really means with her. But before we do, you know what you got to do, right? You got to like, follow, and share. Like, follow, and share all of our platforms that I already mentioned, but you know where we are. Definitely do that. And I just say thank you and appreciate it right now. And um, But you know what? I'm not going to just keep rambling on about a lot of stuff. I don't have a lot to talk about in this intro or anything like that. I'm just glad that you're here. I want you to ba basically tune in, chime in, be engaged. Definitely do that. Um, if you have questions, we'll be talking about business. Um, she, like I said, she's a business coach. We'll be talking about marketing. So this is the time to kind of, you know, drop your questions in and chime in about certain things that we can do right here on this next 30 minutes, 45 minutes of what we can do to help drop some gems into your life and the life of your business. Right. So if you want to do that. Um, is here free of charge for your service right here right now we have her so without further ado i'll be right back with corey hey contact us to see how you can promote your products on according to sasha podcast entrepreneurship small business is something that everybody would love to do making their own money and this is what we will be talking about on According to Sasha. Hey, Corey, how are you? Hey, I'm so excited to be here tonight. Uh, I'm so excited <laughs> to have you here. Thank you so much for being on and taking time out of your day to be here with us tonight. No, why wow, my lighting is so dark. I don't know. I think you're just so bright and cheery over there. And my lighting is just so off. But you know what? We're going to go with your cheerfulness today. And we're going to tell everybody <laughs> who is Corey Fonville Foster. Well, first, thank you so much for having me on tonight to, you know, give me a chance to speak to your amazing community. Um, I am Corey Fonville Foster. I'm a speaker. I'm a trainer. I am also the CEO of IROC Marketable Business Solutions, where we help small business owners monetize their passions and live life on their own terms through coaching and also marketing products. Awesome. Awesome. So tell the world, like, how did you get involved in it? Like, what was it that helped you to just say, look, this is where I want to go into? Oddly enough, it wasn't something that I was super passionate about initially. I actually loved all things medical, and that is where my my heart lied. And actually, I have a rare eye condition called uveitis. And so because of that condition, I was kind of forced, like pushed out of working in the medical field and had to find a new love, a new passion. And I'm not going to give you the long story, but just know that I ended up through starting my own first business and the trials and errors of that, finding a gap in the market that made me really fall in love with affordable marketing and coaching for small business owners. And ever since I was exposed to the world of small business ownership, I just never stopped loving everything about it. So that is where my heart now lies. And I just really enjoy serving the community that I do serve. Awesome. Awesome. Now, does it make it easier for you to have that heart of serving, you know, to work with the community of people, you know, because, you know, we all know that entrepreneurship is not for the weak. And sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's difficult to work with different clients that we have. But at the end of the day, we're all about impact. So what have been your challenging moments as far as like whether you're transitioning into your business coaching or actually working in it? I think for me, and I would say for even a lot of the clients I work with, some of the challenges when you're a small business owner is how do you get your product or your service out there? Like, how do you actually connect 
with your target audience. And that's something that every business owner really struggles with, in my opinion, because you're passionate, right? You're like, oh, I have this amazing product or service, but nobody knows that you even exist. And so that's one of the challenges that we really tackle in my coaching side of my businesses, how to one, figure out who you want to serve, but then figure out how to get them to know that you exist so that you can support them because selling is service. You have to want to help people um, before you worry about making the money. I like that. That's a great point. Because a lot of people do go into starting businesses because they want to make the money, you know, and, and they get, you know, frustrated when it doesn't happen right away or they start seeing Sally, Barbara and Joe start making all the money and they're like, wait a second, I'm doing the same thing. Like, what's the problem? You know, and, and I, I always like to say, you know, business is not cookie cutter. You know, you can't always look at the next person and see say that, OK, just because I have the same type of product that I'm going to have the same type of results. And like you hit it on the head is all about how are you getting out there with your marketing? How are you, you know, how is your business even structured and formed in a way that you can market? And so with some of the clientele that you work with, like what is your special niche? Like what is that community and how does it look like? I'm glad you asked that question because one thing when you have a business, you have to really niche down and say, who is my ideal client? Who do I love? Because if you market to everybody, you really market to no one. So when it comes to IROC Marketable Business Solutions, we love working with service-based um, entrepreneurs. They usually are in their first five years of business, and they are trying to truly monetize that passion, but on a shoestring budget. We're about affordability over here in IROC world. Um, so if you are somebody who maybe has tons of investors, we're probably not for you. But if you're someone who knows that you have um, a way to impact and help others through service, then definitely we're your, we're your place to be. You found your community, you found your tribe. <laughs> I love it that you said it's affordable. And, you know, you guys, we're going to kind of chime in and kind of hone in on that because a lot of times, you know, you have so many different offers out here. You know, you have your affordable, you have your high ticket, you have all these different realms, right? You know, ranges of pricing and, you know, and I just and it's good that you're talking about the fact of being affordable because a lot of people feel like they're stuck and having to do it by themselves because everybody's going to charge something that's so outside of their budget. You know, and when you're saying affordable, I'm quite sure that so do you like work with people budgets or you have your set price, but you just make sure that they can afford it. <laughs> And how do that? <laughs> Affordability is definitely a subjective term. But what I will say is we have done a lot of research to our competitors and we have formulated products and services that can support you at the level you're at. And I think for most people, they can find something within their budget. When I have a consultation call with people, I will tell them, hey, this is what I recommend. But if your budget is tight, then these are the things I would prioritize and this is what that would look like. So we don't have like layaway per se, but we do have things to support you. And I have gotten off a of many a call just giving people some tips to make some money to be able to afford the services they want. Um, so I wouldn't, I would say at least book a call to see um, what it is you need and to have a realistic number so that you know what you do have to gather to get what you need whether that's a website whether that's a logo whether that's email marketing lead generation whatever the case may be um at least know and i would say shop around i i know we're the best in town as far as pricing and quality but check around and see what is the rate because some of you may be saying oh i could never afford this but you probably never really looked into it or asked somebody um and if you don't know then you're really just kind of <laughs> giving up before you get started. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of times people can sit here and say, yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm not really searching. And because for one reason, well, some reasons it could be, well, I would say the main reason in some cases, that's how I want to say it. <laughs> and the main reason yeah. in some cases, <laughs> you know, some people have been burnt, you know, they've yeah. had business coaches, they've had marketing coaches and so forth. And people who have, you know, not say promised to deliver, but they have given a way to say, look, hey, I can help you do this. And they fell short. So yes. what do you say to people who just like, you know what? I don't even know if I want to spend the money. It's like playing a lottery right now. You know, the type of coach you're going to give. I'm going to spend my hundred, my not my hundred, but my five hundred or a thousand dollars. Am I really going to get, you know, what they say I'm going to get? So 
you know, I know you say you're the best around, you know, quality okay. and service and price and all of that good stuff, you know, but what would you get to that person who's really on the edge and saying, you know what, I hear you, but mm -mm, I've just been burnt too much. Yeah. I think if you've ever done any type of business, you, you yourself can say that even me, when I first started my first business, I invested hundreds of dollars into a website just to not ever have it see the light of day, partly the freelancer's fault, but a lot my fault because I didn't even know what to ask for. I didn't realize the difference between a copywriter and a designer. There was a lot of things I just didn't know. So I would say if you have had any type of experience with a coach or a marketer that fell short of what your goal was, just be clear going in, whether you're working with me or anyone else on what it is you're trying to achieve, um, what is that time frame, and how much do you have to invest in it? Because something else that I see a lot is people saying, okay, I want to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, right, in my business, and I'm willing to invest $20 a month. Well, mm -hmm. something in that doesn't really make sense. Um, now, I'm not saying it can't happen, but in all honesty, if you ask someone who's whose business is making hundreds of thousand dollars, how much they're investing in it, whether it's ads, team members, freelancers, whatever the case may be, it's going to be in the high thousands. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have to be one realistic, but also very clear on what it is we want. Um, every coach is not the same. Um, so you have to also have to match, match the vibe and they have to be able to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And then may, they may have to have a realistic conversation with you because I do it every day and say, okay, I hear what you're saying, but you're actually at this step and we got to do a lot of things before we even can talk about this next step because you may be thinking you're at point a you need to get a point b but you may be not even on the map <laughs> and, and we need to get you to point a um so that is something i'm very realistic with people about i am not a coach that says you're gonna make a million dollars next week i'm asking my clients what is your idea of success what is your timeline what is your budget what are you willing to do um and then i can say okay this is what we can do on our end to get you there yeah, that's really good that you had mentioned that um, because, you know, like you said, you have to be realistic about what you're looking at. And I think a lot of times, you know, it depends on the reasons behind why people are starting businesses. In some cases, it could be to bring that extra income in because, you know, they may not be able to work a second job or they have a skill. They say, oh, I can make some money off of this. And, they, and they're just so like, I'm on a timeline, you know, but it's just like, no, it's not going to happen so fast. Some people, yeah, it has happened. We've seen that. But it's not for everybody. You know, you have to be realistic about what you're doing and um, and just being realistic and honest with your clients as a business coach. I feel like in some cases that could be another reason because, you know, people are not really honest all the time. It all depends on what that coach is driven by as well. And, you know, if they're driven by, OK, yeah, I just want to get you in the door because I know I'm going to sell you on this, but that's it. You know, and they're leaving people hanging. I remember having a conversation with someone and that person was like, if I had known, you know, what you're telling me now, I wouldn't have spent hundreds of dollars for something that I never got a follow up behind. We joined the community, we followed the steps, but they just left us right there, stuck and nowhere else to go, you know. And so and I think when you're as a coach or any coaches that are out there who are saying, look, you know what, let me be real with you. You're going to have to do this. And people are not going to want to hear that all the time. But those who are really determined about what they're going to do, they're going to make sure they stay around. I'm quite sure you've seen that <laughs> happen in, in so many cases. So I know we talked a lot about the business side, the coaching and everything. So let's kind of hone in on some of the marketing side of your business. Like what are the areas that you love the most? You know, as marketers, there's a lot of times there's some things that we love and then there's things that we love when we do. But we have our passion. So what would be yours as far as in marketing? So, like I said, our business is about affordability. So I love teaching clients organic marketing um, because I think sometimes, again, they count themselves out because they can't afford ads or what have you. And there is a lot of power in organic marketing. You don't have to have thousands and thousands of people uh, follow you or um, buy your products. Like we can have one high-end product, say $5,000, $10,000 product. You sell three of those, you know, three ten thousand dollar products you've made a thirty thousand dollar month you know what i mean yeah. and so i always tell people like 
you just have to have a strategy. We have a goal, we have a strategy. And so I love teaching organic marketing techniques um, that don't cost people a lot of money. Now, we'll take some of your time, but that's what you're doing business for, right? <laughs> you have to give some time, invest time and or money. That's the way it works. Uh, there's no way around that. And so that's like my favorite thing. Um, on our marketing side, we do everything, like I said before, from logos, websites, lead generation, um, email marketing, um, the list goes on and on. We do a lot of video editing, social media management, things like that. Our job is to really take things off your plate. If it's not in your zone of genius, we want to take that from you so that you can focus on the things you love and really build out your company. Um, so that's like my my go to organic <laughs> marketing. <laughs> All right. So so if somebody's coming and they're on a tight budget and, you know, and they're willing to learn, you know, they have these things and they want to try organic marketing, what would be the top three like first steps they should do? In organic marketing so one of the things i would tell my clients to do is utilize social media because it's free um i've had coaches that are, are from back in the day that had to pay for like infomercials thank god that is not the case because a lot of us would never even give a start a business they had to have things in stock like we don't have to do that oftentimes we sell products before they're even made uh which is really cool because you're, you're making money before you even start investing in it but i would say make sure your social media is at least up right be on and this is how it's because people are like social media is too much be on at least the platform that you love and be on a platform that most of your audience is on Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, I happen to love Facebook. Most of my audience is on Facebook and LinkedIn. So you're going to see me a lot on Facebook and LinkedIn. Now we're on a lot of other platforms as well, but that's because now we've built out and I have a team. But if you're just starting out, be on at least the platform you like, platform your audience is on. That's number one. Secondly, don't be afraid to DM folks. <laughs> Get in the DMs. I started my business literally on Facebook DM, like Messenger, and I messaged everybody in my network. I got my first three clients, no website, no nothing. Just telling people what I do um, and getting into the DMs. So slide in the DMs is number two. And then third is to build a community. Um, one of the things we talk about a lot in my community is this idea of no like, and trust. I didn't invent it, but it works. Um, you have to get people to know who you are. They have to like you, and then they have to trust you before they're more likely to purchase from you, especially if it's high ticket. And so by building a community of people that are your target audience that you can nurture, share, give value to, um, market to, sell to, you're more likely to convert those leads over to paying clients. So those are the three. Awesome. 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 Yeah, I love it. it all of that can get you all on the right track. And, 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 you know, you said that because a lot of times people do say, you know, social media is just too much. I mean, especially depending on what generation they're in, you know, we have our Gen Z's, we have X's and all of that, you know, but it's like those Gen Z's and X's they are like, no, this is too much. I don't even, I don't even know what to do. I don't even want to look, I'm just going to hand it over, but it's still good for you to, even if you hand it over to someone, you know, it's still good to know how it works, you know, so that way exactly. you know what that person should be doing for you and get, you know, understand the language. But yeah, you have people who don't want to do videos, you know, they don't want to get on, the, they don't even want to do a video to put on Facebook or, you know, or anything like that. So it's like, it's like pulling teeth. So have you had those moments where you're just like, look, I'm going to have to just <laughs> get you on this side, on the right side of the track. How was that experience? Yes. <laughs> oh, it's a battle sometimes. Um, it's a battle for sure. So what tends to happen is people don't want to look silly. They don't want to fall on their face. That's usually what it is. It's not usually the tech part unless we're talking some of our older boomers. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, it is a tech thing that we have to kind of bridge them over. But for most people, regardless of the generation, it's more of the feeling of, I don't want to embarrass myself. What if I get up here and I forget my words, I fumble, I whatever. And I tell people this, especially when you're new, ain't nobody watching. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got one, two people, your mom, your cousin. That's it. This is the time to practice, fall. And even if you are on, like maybe you've grown and you have thousands of people watching your live, like most people don't want to see you fail right mm -hmm. this is not the industry we're in we're not like entertainers they don't want to see you fail they don't want to see you um embarrass yourself and so things happen i have fallen out of my chair i have um almost gotten attacked by a dog on a live walking down the street 
the videos are still up, but you got to find them yourself. Um, but all these things have happened and people are like, oh my gosh, are you okay? But love the, yeah. love the content. Um, and so I think for most people, it's just getting over that fear. And so when I work with clients, I will ask them to do me a favor. I'll say record a video and you know you can make it a few seconds long post it don't erase it they'll do that i say good now go live for five minutes they'll do that and what will happen is because they haven't been recording anything when that first video drops their friends their aunties cousins are like oh go ahead girl that first live video people are like oh my gosh look at you so proud of you and then they start to see the analytics hit Right. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then they get more comfortable, more comfortable. And next thing you know, they're hosting webinars. They're on podcasts. They're having all these big, long virtual events, three day summits, all the things. But it is building up the confidence in a way that they still feel supported. And and we just have to challenge them step by step. And that's one. Well, push you out of your comfort zone so you can grow, but also understand that it's, it's levels to it. If I tell most of my clients who are a bit apprehensive about going live on on you know social media to just go live just do it a lot of them would just never do it you know they're just like no <laughs> can't do it but just by understanding them and having it be a step-by-step -step process where they can see the results right away that kind of immediate gratification they are able to build their confidence in a safe space and then build on that which is really great to see yeah, that's wonderful. Wonderful, valuable points there. So I was going to change this a little bit because I know that you're not just always working 24 seven. Really? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I might be wrong. <laughs> so do you ever have any downtime? Do you prioritize like, you know, your time and your moments to really enjoy life? Yeah, I try to. Um, a lot of people will ask me, like, how do you do work life balance? Is it 50 50 or what have you? And it changes definitely depending on the season of life I'm in. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, um, I have family members, friends. And so I do try to make a point to be present and do things with them. I also homeschool. <laughs> so they're here a lot and I try to involve them in the business and, you know, do all those things. Mm -hmm. um, but it isn't always equal. And there are things that I miss because I want to be really clear about that. You know, being a business owner, especially a small business owner, there is a bit of sacrifice. I do have to say no to some things like right now, my husband and my son and the dogs are having a good old time downstairs. You guys can't hear them, uh, but I'm not there. You know, I'm missing that. But um, you know, it's a give and take. I'm able to support you guys and bring value to you. And my husband's able to kind of pick up the slack for me not being there. And then later I'll be able to be present for, you know, the next pillow fight or what have you. Um, so yeah, there is some downtime, um, for sure. I definitely, and I'll even give this to you. I do a lot of block scheduling. So mm -hmm. there are days which, I know like I'm going to be working with the kids or I'm going to be um, taking my bubble bath, <laughs> self-care. Like today I would have got my nails done. Yeah. So those type of things I put on the schedule so that I don't overlook taking those moments to just kind of relax and have me time or to have family time. Yeah. And that's so important. And that's one of the reasons why I ask, because so many times like the business owners, they can get so involved. And I, I can't tell you how much I see it on Facebook. Like, people I follow and they just, you know, you, they'll do the burnout posts. You know, they say, oh, you know, this, all these things are happening. You know, the dog is biting the cat and all this other stuff. And, you know, and it's just like, and we do, we give, and when we're serving our communities as well as being, having a family and everything, we do give so much. So it's really good and, and, and for business owners to really balance that out as much as possible and prioritize the self-care. And I love that you said, you take your bubble bath, make time for that. Yes. You know, you got to be re-energized some way, somehow. Like, I'll turn off, you know, I don't even turn off the phone. I won't turn off the phone, y'all. I don't. I never turn off my phone unless I'm resetting it. <laughs> but, right. right, right, you know, I'm resetting it. But I will, you know, I'll go ahead and be like, you know what? I am I got to push away. Got to push it away sometimes. If it is going to get that manicure or the pedicure or whatever, or whatever it is, you know, just say, look, it's going to be right there. And as long as your time, you know, you have the time management, you're balancing everything, you can still do that. Like, I like, I love your block scheduling that you do to make sure you have that. It's really good. So anything new in your world that's coming up for IROC and BS? 
but there's always new things. I would say definitely if you're watching this, join our community. Uh, we have a free community that's available. Um, we do trainings in there every Monday, um, 6 p.m. Eastern time, totally free. And then every third Friday, we have like a little networking party where we get to know each other. Um, that's always fun. I'm all about the free stuff. So you'll hear me say free, free, free all the time. <laughs> um, and we actually have a new thing that is coming out. I forgot to say it when we first chit-chatted earlier, but we have some VA services coming. So if maybe you want to expand your team, you're looking for some some additional support on more of an hourly base versus like a package, we will have that coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. You can always check um, out any promotions and any of our offerings on our website at irockmarketablebusinesssolutions.com. Awesome. Awesome. And everybody, the, the link is already, you know, attached to this this live and everything. You could go ahead and check out the website and all the things that Corey offers with her business, but then you also could follow her too. I mean, this has really been a great conversation and um, definitely follow her. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have one person chiming in. Nicole Outlaw, thank you for joining in and chiming in. So I need to do better with work-life balance. Block scheduling is good. Yeah, yeah you definitely have to. It's, it's, it's a must. I mean, because when you are... Like Corey said, you know, when you're a business owner and you're out here doing so many things and yeah, you get burnt out easy. And a lot of times that's one of the things that causes people to back off their business. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll back off the business because they got so burnt out and then they try to start again. And it's like, I have to begin again now. I don't know what to do. Yep. They've lost the momentum for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you definitely got to have that, that work-life balance there. But Corey, thank you so much. This has been so awesome and so wonderful. Oh my gosh. So what is like a, a final word of wisdom, a quote or anything that you could share with the audience tonight? I would say if I had to leave you with one final thought, it's make sure that you are passionate about what you are selling mm -hmm. um, because it's going to be hard. Like entrepreneurship is is not for the faint of heart it is going to be hard now there are going to be some really great moments as well but that why like why are you in business that passion is going to really keep you grounded on those rough days and keep you moving forward um and then like i'm gonna slide in one extra thing just don't be afraid to pivot as well because Again, you're going to think you know where you're going. You're going to think you know you have everything in, in place and then things happen. You need to be able to adjust and pivot as needed as well. Um, but you can do it. You can do it. And, and, I, and I can't wait to see more people from your community um, and do all the amazing things that they're going to do. Awesome. Awesome. Y'all heard that. You can do it. OK, definitely. Corey said it. That's it. It's fine. Said it's done. <laughs> but thank you so much, Corey, for being here. It's been such a pleasure. I enjoyed our conversation tonight. Thank you. Thank you and for having again, me. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. And once again, everybody, here's her information. Definitely follow her. She's everywhere. Um, and then also check out the website. It's already attached to the um the information on this live. And yeah, and get connected. Okay. Be a part of her community and and see what it is that she can do and offer you and her services that she did. And on that note, you guys, oh my gosh, a half an hour is almost is already gone. I told you, time just goes by so fast. But I want you to go and get some of that pillow fight time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you go with that pillow and be like, bam, here I am. <laughs> Catch them off guard. But thank you so much again. And everybody, thank you for watching and listening. And on that note, command your day and be great in everything you do, you guys. Bye. See you next week.